Hey guys, what's happening? Uh, a little while back, a couple of people were asking me to do like a tour of the guitars that I have. Um, and I thought to myself, it's been a long time since I've done an actual tour of my little room here. So this is going to be kind of a long video and I'm going to show you everything I got in here from guitars, pedals, amps, that kind of stuff. Even a lot of the other crap I got going on here. It's pretty messy, but that's the nature of rooms like this, I suppose. So, um, like I said, it's going to be a pretty long video. If you're just interested in one particular thing, be that guitars, pedals, whatever, I'm going to put timestamps in the description so you can just jump around the video to whatever you want. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. And... Um, yeah, so other than that, let's get into it. I think I will start... I don't know where I'm going to start. <laughs> um, let's just do a sweep and then we'll get into more specifics. Alright, so this is the entrance to my room. There's a lot of mess behind me, you don't need to see that. Uh, directly behind me, there's a laundry area. That's why about 50% of my videos have either a washing machine running or a dryer running. And off to my right, over there in that room, that's where the furnace is located. So that's about the other half of my videos, why there's noise in the background. So anyway, uh, let's, here we got random guitar cases. Uh, I have the... The red case there is for the Explorer. That's a random case. I don't even remember which guitar I got that in. So it's just like a universal case. And that case has uh, my father-in-law's guitar in it. And uh, it's not really playable. My wife keeps it for sentimental value because he's no longer with us. So I keep it here. Uh, maybe someday I'll try to get it restored. But uh, for now, that's where... It it stays. Um, so we got Royo artwork on the walls everywhere. The Pink Floyd poster. More Royo artwork. And more Royo artwork. So he's pretty much my favorite artist from the heavy metal magazines. I also enjoy Simon Bisley and um, Frank Frazetta, guys like that. I just don't have any of their artwork down here. So, also um, I keep ornamental knives on the wall. Um, they, you know, over the years I've been gifted stuff like that because I have a mild interest in knives. So they're just kind of cool to have and uh, interesting. So rather than keeping them in a a box somewhere, which is what I was doing, I figured I would hang them up. Um, it's a pegboard with random stuff, trying to keep clutter down and failing miserably. And we got another attempt to clean up some clutter. <laughs> that helps a little bit, but as you can see, underneath this table here, I've got a ton more pedal parts. So it helps a little bit, but not a whole lot. And of course, artwork for my daughter, hanging around everywhere. So yeah, um, I guess while we're on non-guitar topics, I'll show off some of these. So these are my perler beads that I did when I was bored. So it's just like plastic beads that you put on a grid and then iron to stick them together. The iron melts them. And uh, yeah, my daughter was doing them. She has all kinds of templates and stuff, and she's only seven. And I figured I would try my hand at it. So most of these are Final Fantasy figures. There's a couple from uh, the TV show Code Monkeys, and a couple from, well, that one's from Breath of Fire. That didn't really turn out that well. 
But, you know, same with that. That's Final Fantasy again. But uh, it, it, the colors aren't really correct, but I did what I could. <laughs> so that's those. And so they're kind of fun. You know, it's something that I can do. Sometimes when my daughter's around, I'll do a small one. The bigger ones I do when I'm home by myself because they take a lot more time and concentration. So, and there's one more right there. That's probably my favorite one so far. That turned out really well. Um, yeah. So I guess that's it for the random stuff for now. Let's get into the guitar stuff. So I'll start over here. This is an Epiphone Flying V. Um, this is completely stock. So I don't remember what pickups it comes with, but they're stock. Everything on this hasn't been changed. The only thing I did to it was I got it a setup, and uh, when I got it, it was in bad need of a fret leveling and dressing, so I got that all done too. It's kind of expensive, but man, I really like this guitar now. It plays so well, and it sounds pretty good, even stock, so I really don't want to mess with this one. And I always wanted a white flying V. I've got a thing for white guitars. Um, anyway. And over here, this is the one that people keep asking if I'm going to sell. The uh, Gibson Voodoo Explorer. Um, at one point, I broke the pots. I think I broke two of the pots. I had them replaced. I sent... I sent away to Gibson actually for the correct pots and replaced them so those are still more or less stock I would say um, the knobs I changed I got some knobs on eBay that are just black pearl uh, topped uh, witch hat knobs I guess is what they're called so they're kinda cool um, the pickups are stock the I got a truss rod cover to match the fifth fret inlay and that's made out of ebony and some sort of a red rock I, I forget which I got it done by a place called shark custom inlays um, I'm not even sure if they're still around I don't think they have an Instagram I'm not sure if they still have a business page but uh, really cool work anyway and you'll see a couple more things by them in a second so that's the Voodoo Explorer and next up is another Epiphone Flying V this one I bought new at the store it was the only one they had that's why it's cream and not white uh, but that's okay um, I got at first when I first bought it, I had a set of EMG pickups that I put in it. It was a, a an 81 and a 60 because I was a huge fan of James Hetfield. Um, I had them in it for a while and decided that uh, they really weren't what I was looking for. So I sold them off and I got a set of GFS power rails. Um, put them in it and added, I used to have a kill switch on it, I replaced the kill switch with a coil split switch, so that switch splits the coils, and uh, more shark custom inlays, these knobs with the iron crosses, and the iron crosses are abalone, and I believe the knobs themselves are ebony wood. So that's really turned out cool, and I prefer the sound of these actually to the EMGs, but I'm still not quite sure they're what I'm looking for. So eventually you may see another set of pickups in this, I'm not sure yet. But uh, I got this set up after I bought it, 
and I wanted to put 12s on it and tune it to uh, D standard. So that was fun for a while. Um, I think I still have 12s on it. Might be 13s. Right now it's in B standard though because uh, I love crowbar and early earth. So that's kind of fun. There's the furnace right on time. And next up is probably the one I get the most questions about. Uh, the This is a Strat and it's built from Warmoth parts. So that was, I like that uh, that label. It looks inlaid but it's not. It's a uh, it's a sticker I think. But it's a really high quality and unfortunately they don't sell those anymore at Warmoth. They should. They're really nice. Um, so yeah, this is a Warmoth Strat. The body is made of solid maple, so it's very heavy. The neck is maple with a bloodwood fingerboard, so it's not too easy to see in this light, but it's a red fingerboard, so it's bloodwood, similar to ebony and just the single Celtic cross on the 12th fret inlay. The frets are their gold frets. I don't know, uh, it comes out sort of. You can see that they're gold. I guess those are supposed to be similar to stainless steel, but they're not quite as hard as stainless steel. They're just colored gold, they're not, you know. And uh, Planet Waves auto trim locking tuners. I really like those. I wish I could afford to put them on all my guitars. So yeah, Warmoth Strat. Like I said, I have a thing for white guitars. And this one has um, the EMG David Gilmore set in it. And it's, uh, it's really nice. I've got a video on it if you want even more detail, but I think I pretty much just repeated everything from that video, so yeah. And finally, for now, this is a Squire jazz bass. Um, I got it as a birthday present one year. My wife wanted to buy me a 12 string actually, but when we went to buy one, uh, they didn't have any in stock. And I didn't want to leave empty handed, so I wanted a bass. And I've always liked the look of J basses. So we got that. And again, I have a thing for white guitars. As you've noticed, it's just a stock Epiphone J bass, or stock Squire J bass, rather. Um, unfortunately, I really don't play this at all, but I do like it. I pick it up from time to time, but I don't really put any time into it, which I really should. It is a nice bass guitar. And uh, yeah, that's it for guitars down here <clears throat> excuse me down here anyway I do have uh, an Epiphone DR500 acoustic but that's upstairs right now which is probably better for it because uh, acoustics probably wouldn't do very well down in this basement but uh, so yeah that's my guitars at the moment I used to have more I've uh, thinned the herd a little bit and I would like to get a, a few more, but, you know, funds don't allow it right now. So, I guess we'll move on to amps. I've only got a couple of amps, so this will only take a second. The one that I use the most is this Blackheart Little Giant 5. I really enjoy this amp, and it's perfect for me. It's not loud. It's switchable from... 5 watts down to 3 watts, which I usually have it all on, always on 3 watts. It's just a simple, simple bass metal treble with a volume. And, uh, yeah, no effects loop, no nothing. It's uh, a really enjoyable amp, and uh, I'm glad I got it. So, one of these days I would like to pick up some more amps, but I, like I said, I don't need anything huge. But uh, there's all kinds of little lunchbox heads that are low wattage that look really interesting that I'd like to pick up 
maybe someday, but uh, for now, this is the one I use the most. And that's paired with a PV412. I don't know which specific PV412 this is, and it's just got the stock speakers in it. I bought it used, um, and it works fine. Sounds pretty good to me, so I'm not too worried about it. It functions for what I need, and uh, that's the important part. I do have these two little amps back here, and yes, they are amps. The top one is a Noisy Cricket bass amp, and the bottom one is a regular Noisy Cricket that has switchable, um, I believe it's output caps. So the bottom one can be this one. It has the proper that switch with all the B's next to it uh, will switch between the normal noisy cricket, an improved bass, and the actual bass amp. So that one's just more versatile than this one. So they're pretty cool. Uh, I enjoyed building them and uh, they sound alright. Definitely nothing wrong with them. I haven't tried them into the 412 yet, so maybe uh, someday I'll try that in a video because that would be kind of cool. And uh, lastly, I have this Marshall Zach Wild micro stack. And if you're wondering what that noise was, that's the stool that I sit on when I do all my pedal demos. So anybody that was asking why it's so noisy, every time I move in this stool, it makes noise. So, but yeah, the Marshall Zach Wild micro stack. It's pretty cool. It was a Christmas present one year. It was my first decent amplifier. So I'm never going to get rid of it. I really don't use it that much anymore though, so that's unfortunate. But it is still here, still works, and it still sounds good. So, And of course that comes with the, the two tens stacked vertically to make it look all impressive, but it's really not. <laughs> it's fun though, and I enjoy it. I have an M-Audio uh, USB, um, I think it's a MIDI controller that I never use, but it's here if I want it. I also have a microphone, and I know a lot of you guys are saying, then why always use your camera microphone? Well, unfortunately, I have this for an audio interface, which is old, and not that it's bad, it works perfectly, and you know, it does what I need it to do, it only has one input, that's all I need. Um, I'm sorry, it has two inputs. It has an XLR and an instrument. But it does what I need. Unfortunately, the problem lies with that laptop. That laptop is, I'm going to say, probably 10 years old, if not slightly older. And every time I try to record audio, through the interface and the microphone, it tends to skip a lot. So I don't know what the issue is, but uh, I'm just chalking it up to old gear. Um, maybe if I ever upgrade that laptop, I'll start using the actual microphone more often. But for now, it's just an irritating problem that I can't deal with, so um, camera mic it is. So I guess uh, lastly, and probably what most of you are here for, is a uh, tour of the pedals. So um, it's been a lot of changes since the last tour that I did. Um, I still have that valve caster stuck away back here that I, I never use it because I don't use, uh, you know, when I first started building pedals I would put them in these little tins because it was cheap and easy to get a hold of, but really they're not sturdy and uh, they're kind of a pain to set up, so I just leave that there. There's a little Atari punk console that I built for my daughter. She likes to mess around with it sometimes, but I think she likes these more. These are both uh, uh, noisemakers. So the one on the left in the South Park tin is a Heterodyne Peyote Space Explorer, and this one is just a Heterodyne Space Explorer, the normal version. They're both interesting and 
fun to play with, especially if you have modulation, reverb, and delay pedals and stuff like that. Um, pretty cool. And uh, so, I guess we'll start up here. This is... I tend to keep uh, the pedals I like the most up on this top part. So, here we got the Sun Model T preamp. One of my favorites. We have the Proco Rat clone. This is an, an updated clone that I built a little while ago for myself. I still have the old one. Um, it's currently in the process of being sold though, so I think I have it upstairs. But this one here is for me. We have a Love Pedal Caught 50 that I built for myself. And this is when I first started trying epoxy finishes, so this finish is really not very nice. There's a lot of uh, blemishes in it. And it's not very clear either. Because when I first started using epoxy finishes, I tried using 5 minute epoxy, which is a bad idea. But it came out surprisingly well on this one, despite all the blemishes, so I'm happy with it. Next up is the Phase 45 clone. Um, this is before I started using epoxy finishes, so the, the finish on top is really very thin and not too durable. Pedal sounds great though. And uh, Borderlands 2 artwork. Interesting. And yeah, sounds great. This one is a Mad Bean build. This is the, uh, what's it called? It's called the Honey Dripper, which is Mad Bean's take on a color sound uh, diphthonizer. So this is a formant filter and it's amazing. I got this because I really wanted to know how to get the sound from Blue Oyster Cult's ETI the sound at the beginning and this will pretty much nail it. Uh, I haven't finished it or put a label on it because unfortunately the drilling is pretty atrocious. Um, I know it doesn't look too bad here or here but uh, it was a real pain to get everything in here and I'm actually kind of surprised that it works now that it is in here but it does work and because it was such a pain to get in there, I don't want to mess with it now, so I haven't finished it. Unfortunately, Mad Bean drilling templates really don't agree with me. So, but uh, I love Mad Bean stuff and I can't recommend them enough. So the Honey Dripper. Another one of my favorite drives, the Dr. Boogie. This is supposed to be Mesa style and uh, like I said in the video I made of it, I use it whenever I play Devin Townsend riffs because it just sounds so good. And uh, yeah, if you want high gain, this is your boy right here. <laughs> Dr. Boogie. This is one I just finished a couple weeks ago because I wanted to build another one for myself. This is the Culture Jam uh, Shoot the Moon Tremolo. Two knob version with a switch to decide between square wave or sine wave style tremolos. And uh, yeah, more Royo artwork. I'm so predictable. Next up is another Mad Bean and another filter. This one is uh, Mad Bean's take on a Mutron. Um, what is it? A Mutron 3, I think. I can't remember exactly, but uh, yeah, I got this in. A, I got this at the same time that I got the Honey Dripper, because, like I said, I was looking for that ETI tone, and I knew it was some sort of filter. Um, and of the classic filters that were available at the time e ETI was written, was basically the Mutron or the Color Sound, so. I decided to try both and see which one did it better. Color Sound does it better, <laughs> but this is not bad and it's uh, really fun to play with. And again, 
Um, the drilling on this one is pretty atrocious. That's why I haven't finished it or labeled it. Um, but it wasn't quite as bad as the other one. So maybe I will at some point take this apart and uh, get it all finished up. Next up we have uh, MXR Carbon Comp clone. Just a you know simple compressor level and level and sustain, which I've labeled syrup here because I put a squishy label on it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this one was for me, so I keep this around. And this is another, I think it was another five minute epoxy job. Came out a little better than the. Um, the COD 50, but still a bit harsh, but it definitely does the job. It's very protected. This one is uh, a heavily modified Love Pedal Woodrow. Doesn't really sound anything like a Woodrow anymore. Sounds more like a COD 50. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on here, so, and it's really bright. Has a uh, switchable clipping. So you can go from MOSFET to no clipping to asymmetrical diode clipping. So it's pretty cool and I enjoyed uh, modifying it and building it. And once again, more Royo artwork. Still more Royo artwork. This is a Catalan bred Naga Viper clone that I built for myself. Um, I didn't demo this pedal because I had already demoed the old Naga Viper that I built and sold. So this one's for me. Really cool treble slash full range boost. And I got it to uh, play around with the preamps that I built. So This is another recent one, the MidFi random number generator. So this is a fuzz and it's a hell of a fuzz. It's uh, like a noise junkies type fuzz. It's very glitchy and sputtery, has a ton of volume, and it, it uh, goes through different octaves, and, and yeah, it's a mess, but it's so much fun. <laughs> and it changes with, uh, whenever you change the, the pickup selector, or the volume or tone controls on your guitar, this gets different, so it's a lot of fun to play with. So this is the uh, Lotus Snowjob clone. Still have it, and it's still one of my favorite drives. And it's just a low gain overdrive with switchable clipping. So the stock one is uh, uh, symmetrical clipping. I put asymmetrical in here just because I seem to prefer it. So left is uh, no clipping and right is asymmetrical. Pretty cool pedal and uh, recommended build. This one's another recent one, the Jetter Gain Stage Red clone. More Royo artwork. <laughs> uh, simple volume gain and tone with a, a gain switch or a saturation switch, whatever you want to call it. Just gives you more gain and saturation when you put it in the up position. And I got that because, once again, Blue Oyster Cult. Um, I saw a rig rundown with Buck Dharma. He had like three or four different jetter pedals on his board, and I figured I'd give one of them a shot. So, it doesn't, uh, I'm sure you can get some Blue Oyster Cult style gains out of it. Actually, I'm, I know you can, because it, it is that kind of gain. But you can do a lot more with it too, and, uh, and I enjoy it. Alright, second shelf. So here we have the Electro Harmonics 22 caliber power amp. I am still waiting on a power supply for this, uh, so I still haven't had a chance to play with it. It's uh, they told me the power supply would be two to three weeks. It's been four. I'm getting kind of irritated, but um, soon. And 
Now this one is the Fuzzhugger uh, Groundswell Overdrive. Fun pedal to play with um, and and modify. I've uh, pardon me. I've modified mine with a clipping switch. I forget exactly what style of clipping I put in here. I think one side is asymmetrical diode and the other side is MOSFET. I can't remember for sure though. And the middle is no no extra clipping. Fun pedal to play with and a fairly easy build so I would recommend it. Still have the Electro Harmonics Holy Grail Nano. One of the first pedals that I got. Um, yeah, and I wanted a reverb. And it's a nice reverb. It's not super spectacular, but I still enjoy it a lot, so I still have it around. This one is the Toadworks um, Mr. Squishy compressor. It's interesting and fun to play with. It sounds great. Um, not exactly sure how much of a compressor it is because it, it seems very subtle. But uh, yeah, I like the way it sounds. So I still keep it around. Another recent one is uh, the Escobedo Harmonic Jerculator clone. Pretty cool little simple fuzz and sounds pretty wonderful. Um, it's different than other fuzzes. It has kind of a almost a cocked wah kind of sound. It's a little weird but good nonetheless. I enjoy it. Uh, this one is the Casper Electronics Echo Bender clone. This is a weird one, <laughs> which is why I still have it. Um, and I put that artwork on it because it kind of, if you've ever seen that episode of Aqua, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, uh, what this guy here does is basically what this pedal does to your signal. <laughs> it's pretty fun. And, uh, yeah, it's a cool noisemaker anyway. And I can't really describe it other than that, so we'll move on. A little Big Muff that I picked up in a trade a while ago. I don't really use it that much, but it's nice to have around. And especially in conjunction with uh, the Sun preamp, or uh, the Model T preamp anyway, um, this can get you into Earth or Sun territory, so it's nice to have. Uh, one of my favorite pedals of all time, the MXR Flanger. This is the full 4-knob version. I got it on sale. It was the same price as the 2-knob version when I bought it, so... Uh, couldn't pass it up and it sounds amazing I love it uh, the first pedal I ever owned the Boss Hyper Metal HM3 I still have it probably never get rid of it it's uh, interesting in that I don't really care much for it for uh, chords or rhythm playing or anything like that, but man, does it ever sound good when you solo. <laughs> There's just something about the way it treats single notes that I really enjoy. Uh, this one, which I think in my 10 favorite drive pedals video that I did, I believe I said this was a, a Mad Professor Sweet Honey Overdrive. It's actually a Barefoot Honeybee, which I'm pretty sure they're both identical, or if they're not identical, they're very close. I believe one of them is based off of the other almost exactly, so yeah, I'm not exactly sure. But this is a Barefoot Honeybee. It's a nice uh, low gain overdrive and uh, sounds really good. Still have a Boss EQ pedal and I modified this one with the low noise mod 
and uh, yeah I keep it around because it's a very handy pedal to have um, if you don't have an equalizer I would recommend the boss one and it's fine as is and if you do the low noise mod on it it's even better Another favorite is the Laney Supergroup 100 Mark I preamp. This is uh, apparently it's identical to the Sun Model T preamp, has the same controls, and uh, the only difference is the values that they used in uh, in the pedal. Apparently, from what I'm told, but it's amazing how much of a difference different values can make. So this is a bit heavier and a bit bassier than the Sun Model T, but they're both wonderful pedals, so I would highly recommend either one. Next we have my trusty MXR Carbon Copy, one of the best delays available. I I got it years ago, I love it, and I'm never going to get rid of it, so not really anything else to say about that. Uh, this one is, uh, it's called an Engineer's Thumb Compressor. I still haven't quite made up my mind on this one, whether I like it or not. It's one of those pedals where it has a lot of control, but it's really easy to dial in a bad sound with it. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting, and every once in a while I go back to it and see if I can decide whether or not I like it. <laughs> but uh, still haven't made up my mind yet but anyway it's finished and this is a King Dubby Delay clone um, it's this is another one where I haven't made up my mind whether or not I like it it's it's a good sounding delay don't get me wrong but there's a couple of issues with it in that uh, the time when you go from all the way to zero to right around noon, there's a very, very, very short delay. Once you get around noon, it starts to get longer. But once you're about here, it's too long. And by the time you get here, it's about two seconds, I believe. So... And also, the longer it gets, the noisier it gets. But that's the nature of the chips that are in this one, which I don't mind that at all. Um, but yeah, the time control is weird. Um, the mode, I'm not sure if it works the way it's supposed to. Like, it's, it's strange. If you have it in oscillation mode, when you push this and hold it, the pedal's supposed to self-oscillate. Um, but I find it does that... Well, uh, I can't even remember. It's been a while since I tried it, but I think the issue I was having was when it's in oscillation mode, pushing the button doesn't really do anything. Or maybe it's in dub mode. I don't even remember, but uh, <laughs> I'll probably revisit this from time to time and see if I can figure it out. Maybe it's just something I'm doing wrong, but uh, it does sound good. I will give it that. Uh, this one, I believe, is the Dr. Q. So this is just an envelope filter. Um, it's kind of cool. I don't really use it much now that I have the Mutron and the um, the color sound. Um, but it's another. It's a cool filter. It's got simpler controls than either one of those. So it's uh, it's cool if you just want like an easy filter sound. Yeah, I would recommend it. This is uh, an old AB switch that I built a long time ago with uh, really shitty paint and graphics. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing else to say about this. It does what it's supposed to do, but it just doesn't look very good. Uh, 
And MXR Phase 90 clone with uh, script switch. Um, yeah, pretty much just uh, did some Van Halen illusions on the on the artwork there with the the blue stripes um, and Dan Halen from Squidbillies. <laughs> I like it, and it sounds great. This is one of the first, uh, well, this is the first uh, PCB that I ever bought from Mad Bean. This is the Mad Bean Lowrider. So it's a kind of a glitchy um, octave pedal. It has an upper octave, but the upper octave is very weak. And it has uh, one octave down and two octaves down, which are a little, a little more prominent. Um, but they are glitchy because I believe it's monophonic. It's, it's definitely not polyphonic. So if you're looking for like um, uh, EHX POG kind of sounds, this isn't it. This is a lot glitchier. And another later one, the Sun uh, Beta preamp. This is the lead version right now because I haven't uh, switched the caps out to make it a bass version and see how that does. But uh, yeah, beastly pedal. Sounds amazing. It's a bit of a bitch to build though, so um, if you're going to try it, make sure you are meticulous when you build this. And my uh, clone of the uh, CVEX Fuzz Factory. Still one of my favorite drive pedals. And uh, I guess just because I like noise, and if you set this up, it'll oscillate, it'll act as a theremin sometimes. It's uh, really enjoyable for me. Finish is kind of shit, but you learn as you go. Electro Harmonics uh, B9 organ machine. Got that on a trade a while ago. I uh, don't really use it too much, but it's definitely cool and uh, unique, so I keep it around just in case. This is uh, my clone of the Midfi Claronaut with an extra uh, daughter board to um, add modulation to the signal. So. Yeah, this is another really cool sort of noise machine. It's a delay with, it has some fuzz in it, but it also has some uh, pitch shifting in it. So it's really fun. And uh, in addition to the Royo artwork on a lot of the pedals that I build for myself, I also do a lot of Calvin and Hobbes artwork as you've noticed. So like this one a lot. Can, and I would recommend it highly for anybody that's into weird shit like I am. And we're on the bottom shelf. Uh, so, start with the Devi Ever Hyperion. It's a really intense fuzz, as it says here. Uh, it's got upper octave in it and a ton of volume. But it's a really easy build, and I would recommend it for fuzz junkies. It's... Uh, Devi Ever makes some really cool shit. Here's one that I just got back. Uh, the Love Pedal Jubilee clone. Uh, I sold this one a while ago. The guy that bought it um, saw one of the other pedals I was selling and asked if he could trade this back to me towards it. So I was like, sure. <laughs> it's a, a really cool uh, mid to high gain Marshall style sound. And, uh, yeah, I still like it, so I would recommend it. Another Love Pedal clone, Love Pedal JTM. So this is, uh, it's pretty much like a modified Cot 50. It sounds a bit more martially than the Cot 50 does, to me anyway. And uh, it's a really simple build, it sounds great.
Uh, this one's the Love Pedal Pepper Mill. It's a, a simple volume and gain overdrive. It's low gain, but if you crank it, you can get a little bit of a, a mid mid level gain out of it. Uh, this one's really nice for stacking, though. It sounds really good and uh, makes other stuff sound good as well. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really uh, a really nice pedal. And again, it's a simple build, so I would highly recommend it. Here we have a clone of the Briggs 11, yet another low gain uh, overdrive. This one's got a bit more control to it though, and it's another uh, pedal that's supposed to be a Marshall sound, sort of a JTM or Plexi style sound. So low gain with a bit of grit, and if you crank everything it'll get a little higher. <laughs> but uh, really nice, and another very simple build. What happens is I tend to build like, uh, you know, when I built the uh, Beta preamp, right after that I built like seven or eight really easy pedals just to, because when you build something complicated, sometimes it gets frustrating. So it's nice to build something simple afterwards to uh, rekindle your love for the hobby. <laughs> this is the Death by Audio Supersonic Fuzz Gun clone. Another really cool fuzz. Uh, the gated sounds are are pretty good, and the oscillation sounds are a little difficult to control, but interesting anyway. So, uh, I I I tend to not have a whole lot of luck with uh, Death by Audio pedals, but this is one of the good ones. So, came out really well. Oh, I'm running out of room here. Okay. I got the Morley Little Alligator Volume Pedal. I really like Morley's pedals and, uh, you know, they do make one uh, that's not a Steve Vai signature, I believe. It's just a regular volume pedal, which is cool, but uh, this one was available to me, so I got it. And my other Morley is the Bad Horsey 1 Wah. As you can see, there's no um, knobs or anything on it. Yeah, I know it's really dirty. I gotta clean it. But, <laughs> yeah. Here's another one that it was available, so I grabbed it. I, I love that it's switchless, and I love that it's spring-loaded. So when you have your foot off of it, it's off. When you put your foot down, it comes on. You don't have to worry about pressing any switches. So, and uh, yeah, sounds great. It's just filthy. <laughs> All right, uh, we're almost done. This is just uh, what I have left here in my chain. So right now, I have the uh, Boss RC2 loop station. Got that a few years ago. And I like it because you don't have to count yourself in. Like, you know, like on the Ditto or other loopers, you have to hit the switch as soon as you want the loop to start. Whereas with this, you can press the switch and it won't start recording until you start playing. So it makes it a bit easier for me anyway. The uh, Death by Audio Reverberation Machine. Uh, still a bit undecided on this. It sounds okay. I was a little bit underwhelmed, I'm going to be honest. Um, I like that you can switch between bright and dark. The gain is kind of useless. I don't like it at all, so I never use it. And uh, the blend gets pretty intense. The weird thing is, though, if you have the volume down, it clips in a weird way. Um, so you have to run it with the volume at least, well about where I have it there is about as as far back as you can put it without it clipping in that strange way, so I don't know. It sounds alright, but not as good as uh, some of the other reverbs that are available to build. The uh, Boss DD3 Digital de Delay, I got that on a trade a while ago. And as you can see, the plate is blank. I don't know exactly what happened here. The guy said that uh, 
the plate, like the, the label on the plate just wore out. I don't know how the hell he wore it out, but uh, I think uh, somebody probably took it off and like polished it or something just because they want it to be different. But it functions perfectly, like there's, there's nothing wrong with it. You just have to remember what each knob does because there are no indications. So that's kind of cool. This one's the DFET, and it's supposed to be a diesel VH4 emulator. Uh, really cool high gain pedal. I would recommend that. But again, it's uh, it's um, it's a very complicated build, so not for the faint of heart. Um, this is the Fairfield Circuitry, the barbershop. And uh, it's a really nice low to mid gain overdrive. Uh, that sag control makes it uh, special. It sounds pretty good when you have the sag down, but as you turn in more sag, it just becomes something. And I don't know if it translates well in a video, but man, it really sounds good. And last, but certainly not least, is the pedal that most of you think I never use, I would say. The Boss Chromatic Tuner TU2. Um, believe it or not, I do use it. And uh, unfortunately, with uh, my space being in the basement, uh, guitars tend to not like staying in tune. And, uh, you know, the way I play, I play pretty heavy-handed, so things go out of tune all the time. I really should work on that, but uh, it's a hobby. I'm not making money off it, so whatever. So I guess that's pretty much it for my room this time. It's a super huge mess where I, uh, this is where I build my pedals. As you can see, there's one here that I'm getting ready to finish up. That's gonna be um, a Sub Decay Liquid Sunshine. I built one before, but this one here has uh, the two switches that I omitted from the last one. So that'll be kind of cool. But yeah, that's my room, guys. And that's all my shit. <laughs> so hopefully this satisfies uh, the guys that were asking for a guitar tour. And in case you were wondering, you know, all the other stuff I had, hopefully... Uh, that gives you an indication and you know my pedals and stuff they change all the time so um yeah i've rambled on long enough uh sorry for the super long video hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time guys take it easy